all my story lovers welcome back in story time channel i am pallavi reading interesting books for you you know that we are reading the 3000 stitches in that book we read today chapter number 2 how to beat the boys written by the great sudha murthy now let's go through it Recently when I visited the US I had to speak to a crowd of both students and highly successful people I always prefer interacting with the audience so I opened the floor to questions After several questions were asked a middle-aged man stood to speak Ma'am you are very confident and clear in communicating your thoughts You are absolutely at ease while talking to us. I was direct. Please don't praise me. Ask me your question. I think you must have studied abroad or done your MBA from the university in the west. Is that what gives you such a confidence? He asked. Without wasting a second, I replied, "It comes from my BVB." He seemed puzzled. What do you mean by my BVB? I smiled. I am talking about the Basappa Veerappa Bhumaraddi College of Engineering and Technology in Hubli, a medium-sized town in the state of Karnataka in India. I have never studied outside of India. The only reason I stand here before you It's because of that college. In a lighter vein, I continued. I am sure that the young people in the software industry who are present here today will appreciate the contribution of Infosys to India and to the US. Infosys has made Bangalore, Karnataka and India proud. Had I not been in BVB, I would not have come to an engineer if i wasn't an engineer then i wouldn't have been able to support my husband and if my husband didn't have his family's backing he may or may not have had the chance to establish infosys at all in that case all of you wouldn't have gathered here today to hear me speak everyone clap and laugh but i really meant what i said after the session got over and the crowd left i felt tired and chose to sit alone on a couch nearby my mind went back to 1968 i was a 17 year old girl with an abundance of courage confidence and the dream to become an engineer I came from an educated though middle class conservative Brahmin family. My father was professor of obstetrics and gynecology in Karnataka Medical College at Hubli. While my mother was a school teacher before she got married. I finished my pre-university exams with excellent marks and told my family that i wanted to pursue engineering i had always been fascinated with science even more so with its application engineering was one of those branches of science that would allow me to utilize my creativity especially in design but it was as if i had dropped a bomb inside our house The immediate reaction was of shock. Engineering was clearly an all male domain and hence considered to a taboo for girls in those days. There was no questioning the status quo wherein girls were expected to be in the company of other female students in a medical or science college. The idea of a woman entering the engineering field had possibly never pop up in anyone's mind. It was a keen expecting peaks to fly. 
I was my grandmother's favorite granddaughter. But you and she look at me with this then and said, If you go ahead and do this, no man from North Karnataka will marry you. Who wants to marry a woman engineer? I am so disappointed in you. My grandmother never thought that I would do anything she disapproved of. However, she also didn't know that in the city of Mysore, across the river of Tungabhadra, live a man named Narayana Murthy who would later want to marry me. My grandfather, a history teacher and my first guru to teach me reading and writing, only mildly opposite. My child, you are wonderful at history. Why can't you do something in this field? You could be a great scholar one day. Don't chase a dry subject like engineering. My mother, who was extremely proficient in mathematics, said, You are good in maths. Why don't you complete your post-graduation in mathematics and get a job as a professor? You can easily work in college after you get married instead of being a hardcore engineer struggling to balance family and work. My father, a liberal man who believed in education for women, thought for a moment and said, I think that you should pursue medicine. You are excellent with people and languages. To tell you the truth, I don't know how much about engineering. We don't have a single engineer in our family. It is a male-dominated industry and you may not find another girl in your class. What if you have to spend four years without a real friend to talk to? Think about it. However, the decision is yours and I will support you. Many of my aunts also thought that no one would marry me if I chose engineering. This would possibly entail that I marry somebody from another community, an absolutely unheard of thing in those days. However, I didn't care. As a student of history, I had read Huen Song book C U Ki before Sands travel to India. Everybody discouraged him from making the journey on foot, but he refused to listen and decided to go. In time, he became famous for his 17-year-long journey to India. Taking courage from Sang, I told my family, I want to do engineering. Come what may, I am ready for the consequences of my actions. I filled out the application from for BVB College of Engineering and Technology, submitted it, and soon received the news that I had been selected to the college on the basis of my marks. I was ecstatic, but little did I know that the college staff was discomfited by this development. The principal at that time was B.C. Khanapuri, who happened to know my father. They both met at a barber shop one day and the principal expressed his genuine anguish at what he perceived to be an awkward situation. He told my father, Dr. Sahib, I know that your daughter is very intelligent and that she has been given admission only because of merit. But I am afraid we have some problems. She will be the only girl in the college. It is going to be difficult for her. First, we don't have a ladies' toilet on campus. We don't have ladies' room for her to relax either. Second, our boys are young with ragging hormones and I am sure that they will trouble her. They may not do anything in front of the staff, but they will definitely do something later. They may not cooperate with her or help her because they are not used to talking to girls. As a father of four daughters, I am concerned about yours too. Can you tell her to change her mind for her own sake? My father replied, I agree with you. 
professor sahib i know you mean well but my daughter is hell bent on pursuing engineering frankly she is not doing anything wrong so i have decided to let her pursue it in that case dr sahib i have a small request please ask her to wear a sari to college as it is a man's world out there and the sari will be an appropriate dress for the environment she will be in she should not talk to the boys unnecessarily because that will give rise to rumors and that's never good for a girl in our society also tell her to avoid going to the college canteen and spending time there with the boys my father came back and told me about this conversation i readily agreed to all the request since i had no intention of changing my mind eventually i would become friendly with some of the boys but i always knew where to draw the line the truth is that it were these same boys who would teach me some of life's lesson later such as the value of keeping a sense of perspective the importance of talking it easy every now and then and being a good sport many of the boys who are now older gentlemen are like my brothers even after 50 years finally it was the lack of ladies toilets on campus that made me understand the difficulty faced by many women in india due to the insufficiency or sheer absence of toilets eventually this would lead me to build more than 30000 toilets in karnataka alone meanwhile my mother chose an auspicious day for me to pay the tuition fee it was a thursday and happened to be the end of the month my mother nagged me to pay the fee of rupees 400 that day although my father only had rupees 300 left he told her wait for a few days i'll get my salary then sudha can pay her fees my mother refused to budge our daughter is going to college it is a big deal we must pay the fees today it will be good for her studies while they were still going back and forth my father's assistant dr s s hiremath came along with his father in law patil who was the headman of the bad village near shigao the town where i was born patil curiously asked what was going on and my father explained the situation to him he then took out his wallet and gave my father a hundred rupees he said dr sahib please accept this money i want to gift it to this girl who is doing something path breaking i have seen parents take loans and sell their houses or farms to pay their sons fee so that they can become engineers in fact sometimes they don't even know whether their child will study properly or not look at your daughter she desperately wants to do this and i think she is right no mr patil my father refused i can't take such an expensive gift i'll accept this as a loan and return it to you next month after i receive my salary patil continued as though he hadn't heard my father the most important thing is for your daughter to do the best and complete her course and become a model for other girls then he turned to me and said sudha promise me that you will always be ethical impartial and hard working and that you will bring a good name to your family and society i nodded meekly suddenly humbled my first day of college arrived a month later i wore a white sari for the first time touched the feet of all the elders at home and prayed to goddess saraswati who had been very kind to me i then made my way to the college as soon as reach the principal called me and gave me a key he said here ms kulkarni take this this is the key of a tiny room in the corner of the electrical engineering department on the second floor 
you can use this room whenever you want i thanked him profusely took the key and immediately went to see the room i opened the door excitedly but alas the room had two broken desk and there was no sign of toilet it was so dusty that i could not even consider entering it seeing me there a cleaner came running with a broom in his hand without looking at me he said i am so sorry principal sir told me yesterday that the girl student was going to join the college today but i thought that he was joking so i didn't clean the room anyway i'll do it right now after he had finished cleaning i still felt that the room was dusty calmly i told him leave the broom here and give me wet cloth please i'll clean the room myself after cleaning the room to my satisfaction i brushed off the dust on my clothes and went to class when i entered the room on the ground floor there were 149 pairs of eyes staring at me as though i were some kind of an exotic animal it was true though i was the 150th animal in the zoo i knew that some of them wanted to whistle but i kept a straight face and look around for a place to sit the first bench was empty as i was about to sit there i saw that someone had split blue ink right in the middle of the seat this was obviously meant for me i felt tears threatening to spill over but i blinked them away making use of the newspaper in my hand i wiped the seat clean and sat on the corner of the bench i could hear the boys whispering behind me one grumble why the hell did you put ink on the seat now she may go and complain to the principal another boy replied how can she prove that i have done it there are 149 of us here despite feeling hurt i did not go to the principal to complain he had already warned my father that if i complained these boys might persist in troubling me further and i may eventually have to leave the college so i decided to keep quiet no matter how much these boys tried to harass me the truth was that i was afraid of being so troubled by the boys activities that i would quite engineering all together i thought of ways to stay strong physically and mentally it would be my purpose or penance in that instant i resolved that for the next 4 years i would neither miss any class nor ask anyone for help with class notes in an effort to teach myself self restraint and self control i decided that until i completed my engineering degree i would wear only white sarees refrain from sweets sleep on a mat and take baths with cold water i aim to become self sufficient i would be my best friend and my worst enemy i didn't know then that such a quote already existed in a bhagavad gita where krishna says atma eva hi atma bandhu atma eva ripu atmanah we really don't need such a penance to do well in our studies but i was young and determined and wanted to do all i could to survive engineering i had good teachers who were considerate and sought to look out for me in class they would occasionally ask miss kulkarni is everything okay with you even our college principal professor khanapure went out of his way to inquire about my welfare and if any boys were troubling me however i can't say the same about my classmates one day they bought a small bunch of flowers and stuck it in my plaited hair without my knowledge when the teacher was not around i heard someone shout from back miss flower pot i quietly ran my fingers through my hair found the flowers and threw them away i did not say anything 
At times they would throw paper airplanes at my back unfolding the papers i would find comments such as a woman's place is in the kitchen or in a medical science or as a professor definitely not in an engineering college others would read we really pity you why are you performing penance like goddesses parvati at least parvati had a reason for it she wanted to marry shiva who is your shiva i would keep the paper planes and refrain from replying there was a famous student friendly activity in our college known as a fish pond rather than an actual fish pond it was a fish bowl that carried a collection of anonymous notes or the fish anybody from the college could write a comment or an opinion that would be read out later on our annual college day all the students would eagerly wait to hear what funny and witty remarks had been selected that year the designated host would stand on the stage in the college quadrangle and read the notes out loud every year most of the notes were about me i was often to target of kannada limericks one of which i can still remember vividly awwa awwa jensa kari seri odisha gandana manaja kalisa this literally translate to mom mom there is a sweet potato please give me black sari and send me to my husband's house this is because i am always wearing a white sari some of the romantic north indian boys would modify the lyrics of songs from movies like teesri kasam sajan re jhoot mat bolo sudha ke paas jana hai na haathi hai na ghoda hai wahan paidal hi jana hai this can be translated as dear come on don't lie i want to go to sudha i neither have an elephant nor a horse but i will go walking to her all the boys would then sneak a glance at me to see my reaction but i would simply hold back my tears and try my hardest to smile i knew that my classmates were acting out for a reason i was not that they wanted to bully or harass me with deliberate intention as is the norm these days i was just that they were unprepared both mentally and physically to deal with a person of the opposite sex studying with them on conservative society discourage the mingling of boys and girls even as friends and so i was as interesting as an alien to them my mind justified the reason for the boys behavior and helped me cope and yet the remarks the pranks and the scarcum continue to hurt my only outlet in college was my actual education i enjoyed the engineering subject and did very well in my exams i found that i perform better than the boys even in hardcore engineering subject such as smithy feeling carpentry and welding the boys wore blue overalls and i wore a blue apron over my sari i knew that i look quite funny but it was a small price to pay for the education i was getting when the exams results were announced everyone else knew my marks before i did almost every semester my classmates and seniors would make a singular effort to find out my marks and display them on the notice board for everyone to see i had absolutely no privacy over the course of my studies i realized that the belief engineering is man's domain is a complete myth not only was i just as capable as them i also scored higher than all my classmates this gave me additional confidence and i continued to not miss a single day or a single class i persisted in studying hard determined to top the subsequent examination in time i became unfazed that my marks were displayed on the notice board 
on the contrary i was proud that i was beating all the boys at their own game as i kept bagging the first rank in the university my ability to be self sufficient made me strong and the boys eventually started to respect me became dependent on me for surveys and drawings and ask me for the answers of assignments i began to make friends and even today my good friends include ramesh jangal from the civil department my lab partner sunil kulkarni and the fakir gowda mm kulkarni hire gowda anand uthuri gajanan thakur prakash padaki hp sudarshan and ramesh lodia i will never forget my teachers lj norona from the electrical engineering department yoga narsinha a gifted teacher from bengaluru professor mallapur from the chemistry department professor kulkarni from hydraulics and many more between my classes i also spent much time in the library and the librarian became very fond of me over time eventually giving me extra books i also spoke frequently to the gardener about the trees that should be planted in front of the college and during my four years there i had him plant coconut trees wherever i go to bvb now i look at the coconut trees and fondly remember my golden days on the campus the four years passed quickly and the day came when i finally had to leave i felt sad i had come as a sacred teenager and was living as a confident and a bright young engineer college had taught me the resilience to face any situation the flexibility to adjust as needed the importance of building good and healthy relationships with others sharing notes with classmates and collaborating with others instead of staying by myself thus when i speak of friends i don't usually think of women but rather of men because i really grew up with them when i later entered the corporate world it was again dominated by men it was only natural for my colleagues or friend to be a man and only sometimes would there be a woman whom i have got to know over many years college is not just building made up of walls benches and desk it is much more intangible than that the right education should make you confident persons and that is what bvb did for me i later completed my masters program from the indian institute of science bangalore yet bvb continued to have a special place in my heart when my father passed away due to old age i decided to do something in his memory he had allowed me to go ahead and become an engineer despite all the odds and the grievances he had heard from our family and society thus i built a lecture hall in his memory in our college campus whenever i go abroad to deliver a speech at least five people of different ages come and tell me that they are from bvb2 i connect with them immediately and can't help but smile and ask which year did you graduate who were your teachers how many girls studied in your class now whenever i go back to the college it is like a celebration like a daughter coming home towards the end of the visit i almost always stand alone in the inner quadrangle of the stage my memories take me back to the numerous occasions when i receive awards for academic excellence i then spend a few minutes in front of the notice board and walk up to a small room on the second floor of the electrical engineering department that was kulkarni's room but no longer dusty now i remember the bench on which i sat and prepare my for exams my heart feels a familiar ache 
when i recall some of my teachers and classmates who are no longer in this world today and then i walk down the stairs i come across groups of girls chatting away happily and wearing jeans skirts or traditional salwar kameezes there are almost as many girls as there are boys in the college when they see me they lovingly surround me for autographs in the midst of the crowd and the signings i think of my parents and my journey of 50 years and my eyes get misty may god bless our college b v b this is the end of this chapter do you like this then tell me in the comment box and tell me how will you beat the boys Bye bye